Then what we call the preview manager opens up. We use it to see a preview of each layer in our grid. Depending on the projection area size, the preview manager will zoom in to a better view of the layer. I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can slide through the animation either by moving through the timeline at the top or you can use control and your mouse wheel together to do the same thing. It takes a lot of PC processing power for the print to show in this way because the application will first generate an SVG and then convert it to a PNG that would be used when printing. So you are seeing it exactly as you would when the object gets printed. At the bottom left of your screen, you can insert values to override some printing properties. Once they are added, they will appear in your override list. We will be covering this in detail in another more advanced video. On the right, we have the support list, which will soon become the support manager. This function is still being written for Gizmotor. It's not completed or available yet, but basically it will allow users to generate supports in a 2D view. This means you will be able to place the supports exactly on the islands that need supports. No more trying to find the right location in 3D. We haven't seen it being done in applications of other 3D printers, which normally only show the supports in 3D view. Let's click on Next. Then the Calibration Settings box opens. If you click on Display Calibration, the software will display whatever you chose in the Calibration Image dialog on your second display. Your second display might be a second computer screen if you're not connected to the printer or it could be the projector if you are connected to the printer. At this stage, your projector will be shining the image onto the resin. You can go to your printer and measure the image to ensure that it is the correct size that you want your object to be. Click on this arrow to open up the advanced settings. Use the scale up and scale down buttons to adjust the size of the image until it is the correct size. Note the different sized increments that you can click on to get it perfect. These buttons are listed from the biggest value to the smallest value. The values are shown in millimeters. In the calibration image drop down box at the top, you can choose to view layers instead. Then when you click on display calibration, it should show the first layer. We aren't going to cover calibration grid in this tutorial as the code for this function is also still being written. The calibration time sets how long you want to display the image for. You can choose what color you want the image to be, red or white. If you display the image in red, it won't solidify the resin when the image shines onto it. Whereas if you display the image in white, it will burn a layer into the resin in your vat. Normally we use red to get the size of the image correct. And once we are happy with the size, we display it in white to technically print a layer. We then take the printed layer off of the build plate to measure it too. Here's a quick screen capture of what a red image display looks like on my second computer screen. The projector's Z position value determines, determines where the projector is positioned. If the value is zero, the projector will be against the rail break closest to the back. The software will calculate how far the projector is supposed to be from the starting point. This is mostly used when you have the automated projector movement assembly installed in the printer. The printer will automatically move the projector to the correct position and all you need to do then is to focus the lens. If you don't have the automated projector assembly installed, then the best way to calibrate it is by measuring the projection area width. The software will also tell you how wide the projection area is. You can also measure from 
z position zero yourself and place the projector at the correct z distance. Distance is measured in millimeters. Projected distance is the true distance that the projector is from the resin. It's linked directly to the z position. For instance, if the z position is zero, meaning the projector is in its starting position, the projector might be 50 millimeters from the resin or 100 millimeters from the resin, depending on how the printer has been configured. If your machine doesn't have automated projector movement built into it, you would need to manually measure how far the projector is from the resin. Projection width just shows you how wide the projection area needs to be. The bigger the area, the further away the projector has to be from the resin. The bigger the object you want to print, the bigger the projection area you need. If you want to print an object that is 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, then you need a projection area that gives you a height of 50 millimeters. So in this case, you would need a projection width of 17 millimeters to fit the object in. The software will show you how wide the projection area needs to be. The preview manager will zoom in and out automatically for you using the projection area width to determine whether it is a big or a small object. These scaling settings will be discussed in future tutorials. There are three ways to ensure that your projection size is correct. You can measure the width, the distance and the z position. Now we can click next and we are up to slicing. Press start just once, then the software will start slicing according to the settings you configured. When slicing this way we will only be slicing inside Gizmator. Remote slicing will be discussed in a future tutorial. The software is now creating PNG files for you on your hard drive and when that is completed it will create a .gizmo file which will contain any movie files, your configurations, .stl and PNG files. These will be placed in your recent folder. If there's already a .gizmo file saved in your recent folder with the same name, the software will create a backup file and a new file with your current settings. So you don't have to worry about losing your previous .gizmo file. You can go back to look over what your settings were if you need to. When this bar is completely blue, you can go to your recent folder through Windows Explorer. And then check the date to see which one is the latest .gizmo folder. There you have it. You can unzip it to have a look at all of the different bits and pieces that I mentioned earlier if you like. That concludes this video. In the next video we will show you how to use your .gizmo file to print.